Good afternoon, everybody. The noonday gun in Cape Town has just gone off. We're our studios based, and thank you for joining us. Welcome to REI Talk. It's our weekly investment webinar brought to you by Real Estate Investor. Today's invest, uh, investment webinar is sponsored by Montchoisy in association with Pan Golding Properties Mauritius. My name is Neil Peterson. I'm the founder of Real Estate Investor, South Africa's leading independent digital real estate platform for over 14 years geared for investors, home buyers, landlords, developers, entrepreneurs, and property practitioners. So REI's omni-channel content is delivered by our specialist team of journalists, of content specialists, industry and marketing experts, all passionate about serving the South African and offshore real estate industry to over 300,000 people in our community. So you can connect with REI's thought-leading content, news and education by remag.co.za, our digital content platform, which includes podcasts, videos, eBooks, property guides, our digital interactive magazine, Real Estate Investor, our live and virtual events and masterclasses. And also our new spatial metaverse where multiple users can interact and engage in a 3D computer generated virtual space. And I'm really excited to be your host and moderator for today's investment webinar. And today's topic is how to invest in Mauritius property and more importantly, to get a residence by the investment option. We know that the island of Mauritius has always been a popular destination for local holiday makers here in South Africa. But in the last five years, in fact, longer, it has also attracted a big range of investors, entrepreneurs, and retirees from South Africa. And some businesses have relocated there. Others have invested in property while not becoming permanent residents and some ha have become permanent residents. So there definitely is a growing interest in residency options through investment. And um, we know that Mauritius has set a target of attracting, I think it's something like 30,000 South Africans um, looking at retirees, entrepreneurs, and there are many reasons and good reasons to invest in Mauritius today. Some of it, in fact, most of it, which we'll discuss in today's uh, webinar. Some of it is the high per capita income le uh, levels. If we look at the World Bank, uh, officially classified Mauritius as a high income country in July 2020. And the latest stats from New World Health and Afro Asia report on Mauritius indicates that average wealth per capita in Mauritius amounts to just over 30,000 uh, US dollars as at uh, June 2021, which is above second place South Africa at $11,000 per capita. Also, Mauritius ranks first in Africa, 13th worldwide in the World Bank's 2020 in terms of doing business in the country. It's also low taxes, which encourage business formation and appeal to uh, retirees. There's no inheritance tax, capital gains tax. We're going to get into all of this. And it was Mauritius was recently rated as the safest country in Africa, along with Namibia and Botswana by New World Health. So let's discuss. We're also going to view and see and listen to the opportunities available for you to invest in Mauritius. So without further ado, let's meet our expert panelists for today. So first of all, I'm going to ask uh, Richard if you could first uh, introduce yourself to the attendees, please. Uh, good day, Neil. Good day, good day to everybody. Um, yeah, so I've been involved in Pam Building International for about 15 years now. Uh, and more focused, uh, focused on Mauritius for about the last 10 years, and very much overseeing the Mauritian business on behalf of the PAM Building Group, but also spending a lot of my time on these projects like Montchoisie that are very much aimed at foreigners um, looking for investments as well as permanent residency. Wonderful. Well, it's great having you, Richard, and, uh, and we look forward to hearing from you a little bit later. Jonathan, would you introduce, introduce yourself to the audience, please? Um, thanks, Neil, um, and welcome to all. Um, Jonathan Tag, um, based out of Mauritius, so I've been in Mauritius for about 15 years. Um, primarily involved in projects like Montchoisie, the one we, we're going to be discussing today. Um, have a family here, so happy to answer any questions related to you know, Mauritian lifestyle, schooling, you know, any other queries that the guys listening in might, might have. Awesome. Well, it's great having you, uh, Jonathan. And Garrett, do you want to introduce yourself to the audience, please? Thanks, Neil. Um, yeah, so I've been on the island for 16 years. I've married Mauritian. I have, uh, I have two little girls. Um, I've been in the property development game now 
for almost uh, 10, 11 years. Um, and uh, yeah, I love Mauritius. And if anyone wants, wants to discuss further on families, schooling, all that kind of stuff, you know, we can we can get into that later. Wonderful, great, and great having you on, Garrett, as well. So, Richard, let's get into uh, let's get started on your side first. Um, so, Richard, can you maybe comment on the demand for residency and specifically the residency by investment program in Mauritius, and and what is the current appetite that you're seeing from South Africans right now? Um, yeah, thanks, Neil. So, so we as Pam Building International and, and Pam Building Mauritius in particular launched the first real estate um, investor scheme called Tamarina in about 2005. So the program has been running for 15, 16 years now. And what we saw there was very much a, a French and South African client base. And that was sort of the start of the interest uh, for real estate for South Africans uh, in, in this instance, um, looking at Mauritius for both investment and a residency permanent residency option. Um, you know, since then we've seen over the last five years, the demand ramp up quite a lot as more and more um, sort of developments have come on stream. And we also now sort of seeing the demand from a resale perspective with completed units as the, the market matures. Um, so clients now sort of have both those options, which is, which is good. Um, then in the last six months I mean, from South Africa, we've seen a, also again, a, a, a noticeable increase in the demand um, and inquiry rate that's coming through from, from South Africans in general. And interestingly, what we're seeing is a shift in the clientele. So up until now, we've very much seen it from 55 years plus looking to buy something in Mauritius, uh, ultimately live there or spend a couple of months of the year there. What we're seeing now is that the clientele are, are younger, 40, let's say 40 years plus with kids, with their family, and they're looking at Mauritius as a viable alternative uh, to relocate and ultimately to do business from. So I think Jonathan will touch on that in, in a bit more detail um, later on. Great, excellent. So Richard, I think maybe you can explain this to us in more detail how that uh, Mauritius resident by investment program works because I've seen the demand is there and uh, we know these, uh, there are South Africans looking abroad. Um, so, so why we like this program so much is that it really is the one of the simplest residency by investment programs around. So it's as simple as ultimately spending 375,000 US dollars um, in a property purchase within one of the approved developments for foreigners. And as long as you, you're purchasing that, and obviously higher than that, um, you can acquire permanent residency for yourself, your spouse and your kids under 24. The nice thing about the Mauritian program is there are no other requirements. So there are no visitation requirements, there are no language tests, so ultimately people can buy the property and ultimately decide you know, when they want to ultimately reside in Mauritius and there's no sort of other criteria you know, putting pressure on them. Um, so the other important thing is, uh, and which we guide the clients through is ultimately how the, the sort of process works. So I'll just take it, take you through in, in, in simple detail, but ultimately if a client buys a property, they sign the title deed. Um, and at that time, they, we then assist the client to do the application for permanent residency. Um, it's quite a simple process, you know, collating a bit of documents. And ultimately we then submit that to the economic development board. And that process takes about eight to 12 weeks. So ultimately, from when a client chooses a property, they can achieve permanent residency within about four or five months. Well, that's pretty quick compared to a lot of the other programs out there. And uh, so Richard, um, there has apparently been some recent additions to the program that make it even more attractive. Can you maybe tell us a little bit about that? Sure. So in the latest budget speech, uh, which was ultimately promulgated through law in um, sort of the first part of this year, uh, we have seen two noticeable improvements in the program. One of them is that you no longer require a separate work ap permit application in order to work in Mauritius. So your permanent residency status through property now allows you to work in Mauritius without having to go through another application process. Um, you know, so that's a big one. And then the second one is, you know, some of our clients say it's not such a, such a great improvement, but you can now bring your parents with you. So <laughs> ultimately, if I purchase a property, 
um, my, it covers three generations. I can bring my parents with me and my kids come with me. So the program covers three generations ultimately. So you know, by and large, those two changes are, are really quite big ones and, and make the program a lot more attractive and accessible to, to a large, larger audience. Awesome. That's very interesting. Thanks, Richard. Thanks for setting that scene. I'm going to bring in uh, Jonathan now. So Jonathan, um, you seem to place a large focus on ground bike for investment uh, in Mauritius. So why do you suggest clients purchase in ground bike in particular? Yeah, so Neil, I mean, here we, in front of us, we've got uh, just a Google Earth um, representation of ground bike. Um, and most importantly, just to the left of the bay, um, you have the Montchoisie Golf Estate. Um, so it's interesting, you know, what we're going to cover a little bit later is it's really right on the boundary of Grand Bay on the eastern side and uh, the Montchoisie Beach, which is a very well-known beach on the western side of the site. Um, Grand Bay essentially was the first town that developed, coastal town that developed. Um, started developing in the 80s. Uh, it was the first part of the island that um, got early hotels. Um, so the infrastructure is just a little bit further ahead than most other areas, but equally the reason why it developed first is I feel that the weather is just a little bit easier than other parts of the island. I mean, it is a tropical environment, but the north, um, it's protected from the southeast winds that come over winter and it's a little bit more tropical, um, not quite as hot as, as some other sort of coastal areas. Um, but I think most importantly, it's the infrastructure that's there now. Um, families got access to schools, shopping, recreation, um, medical. Um, so from a services point of view for a family or a retired couple looking to spend uh, a longer period of time on the island, um, for me, it certainly is one of the, the most convenient locations to live um, with the benefit of beautiful beaches um, and uh, recreation facilities, gyms, spas, um, you know, whatever you might need on the island, uh, you'll generally find in Grand Bay. Awesome. So maybe just tell us a little bit about the typical profile of the people looking to invest. Um, I mean, who are they? Yeah, so it, it's changed a little bit, Neil. Um, when I first got here 15 years ago, um, I'd say the predominant consumer was sort of 55 to 80. That was sort of the general age group, uh, mostly retired or reaching retirement. Um, obviously, a market with a lot more disposable income than some of the younger groups. Um, so that was really, I would say, up until about two or three years ago, was the predominant market. Uh, French consumer being the biggest client on the island from a numbers point of view, um, with the South Africans probably the second largest group. And then what we started to see a shift away from is two different types of uh, further consumers. One is the families. Um, I'm not sure if it's sort of come around as a result of COVID and people realizing that they can work a little bit more remotely. Um, but we're seeing a lot more families relocate to the island. Um, perhaps the husband will continue to commute, but the family will be stationed on the island. Um, and they basically become sort of relocators um, and this would become their full-time sort of destination. Um, and the other, the other noticeable increase is in the investor group. Um, we're finding clients now, particularly South Africans, looking to you know, have a, another destination for, for investing. Um, Mauritius is popular. It's the advantages, it's a reasonable investment, but you can also get usage out of the investment. So that's become a fairly strong market for us. Um, clients sort of wanting residency. So sort of 375, probably to about $800,000 tends to be the investor mark. Um, and I expect that that will sort of continue to grow. And then we continue to see kind of the swallows. Um, we see it, I think, in South Africa as well occasionally, but it's clients that the Europeans would typically come over their winter. So they would be here November through to sort of February, March. Um, and then very often you'll see the South Africans will come in a different time. They'll come out sort of April, May, and then might stay through till sort of September, October when it starts to get warmer in South Africa. So it, it has, the client base has changed. Um, nice to see some younger people, but I think uh, the predominant consumer will probably uh, remain sort of the retired person come relocator. Wonderful. And I think a great way to set the scene to our audience out there. Don't forget, you know, got the Q&A box at the bottom. We'd like to get all your questions. We've got the experts around you on Mauritius. And uh, next up, we've got Garrett. Now, Garrett, you, you're from Montrose. 
um, you're actually from the developer and maybe you can just tell us, you know, what makes Montreuxie different to its competitors? Thanks, Neil. Um, yeah, well, to carry on what John was saying is um, we got Grand Bay right next to our doorstep. You know, a location is key when you're investing into a real estate. Um, and I would say that our location is unbeatable. Um, being right next to Grand Bay, being right next to a Montreux beach and being on the only golf estate in the north, um, making our, our smart city, you know, very, very special. Um, we also have a very, um, our product offering is more for the family. It's, it's, it's larger residences, um, more, I would say, premium finishes. Um, with a lot of lifestyle offering within our estate. I mean, so just to list a few, I mean, we've got golf, of course, uh, we've got horse riding, we've got a leisure center, which has, you know, a sauna, hammam, it's got a heated swimming pool, tennis courts, a paddle courts. Um, so we're right next to the beach of Montreuxie, which, which gives you all the possibilities of catamaran trips, diving, fishing, um, We've got running tracks, we've got bicycle tracks, um, and eventually, you know, once the estate grows and um, it's going to have much larger running tracks, it's going to have a golf cart tracks to link up uh, the whole of the small city back to the beach, back to the moor, um, and to adjacent Grand Bay. So I would think that's our key, um, our key difference. Okay. With all the other competitors here in the north. Um, awesome. So, now, so Garrett, maybe just tell us a little bit about uh, Montreuxie because I understand that previously it was a farm with you know great heritage zones, and then since then phase one and two have been completed as well as the eighteen-hole Peter Matkovich golf course as well. So maybe you can just explain to everybody what is currently happening on this site because I understand that okay, obviously you're not to the next phase. Oh, sure. So you're correct. Um, it's a family-owned estate. Um, it was established in 1820. So, so what is that, almost 200 years ago? Um, <laughs> the estate covers over 423 hectares of land. Um, there you can see that's our main entrance, uh, driving, into, driving through our main gate. Um, so there's a lot of heritage, you know, the, there's a lot of history and age, you know, the trees are, are very well established um, and uh, we, we recently completed in 2008 um, our, our phase one and two of our residential um, offering, which was the IRS, Le Parc de Marchoisie, um, and uh, at the same time we completed our golf course, which is a championship Peter Makovich course a design course. Um, and since then, we've moved on to phase three and four of La Reserve. Uh, phase three is currently sold out and it's under construction. Um, and phase four is currently on sale. So we, we are continuing, you know, selling high-end premium uh, residential apartments and villas um, within our estate. Uh, and it's full turnkey. So basically uh, fully finished and furnished if uh, the buyer chooses. That's our leisure center that we that is currently finishing up this month and it'll be it'll be fully operational from the first of December. So that's where you have your tennis courts, your paddle tennis court which is quite uh, quite popular at the moment. Um, and then we've got techno gym gym facility, you know, we got yoga decks, um, the heated swimming pool, we've got a restaurant. So yeah, so uh, our lifestyle offering um, is growing with each development and it will keep on growing until our smart city is complete. But having awesome. a Grand Bay right next door, um, you know, that, that gives you the nightlife, it gives you the possibilities of going to, to other restaurants, you know, we surrounded by, by premium resorts as well. Um, Five-star resorts are all around us. Um, so it gives you I'll say the full spectrum. Wonderful. Beautiful, Garrett. I mean, I feel like jumping on a plane to come visit you right away. So 
<laughs> Great. I think excellent uh, introduction. Beautiful, beautiful development. And I'm going to bring in you, Jonathan. Let's get into the mechanics because I think a lot of people are interested about that. You know, how does the purchase process work in Mauritius? I mean, and uh, for people wanting to invest, then I think also more importantly to secure that permanent residency. Can you maybe just share a little bit about that? Sure, Neil. Um, so clients have two different options. The one option would be to come along and buy a completed property. Um, the other option would be to buy a property or plan. So just a, a quick one on, on something Garrett said. Garrett said that the development was completed in 2008. It was actually completed in 2018, um, just for people out there. Um, so recently completed, um, there are currently probably about 350 residences built on the estate. Um, we, we, we are now starting phase three, um, as Garrett mentioned, on the construction side. And, and what people do is they have two different choices. As I said, you can go for something complete. Um, that process is really just a case of coming out, identifying the property that suits you. Uh, you engage in the purchase process. Um, it will take around three months to complete the transaction. Um, and at that junction, you can, you can apply for permanent residence. Um, and we've got a team in our office that basically manages the permanent residence for them. What we're doing more with Montrose is it's, it's more selling off plan. Um, so if this is for the consumer who would like to have a little bit more choice in what he buys, um, he would prefer to have a, a brand new um, property. Um, and I would also highlight that um, the pricing of brand new and um, second hand, very often there's more value in brand new. So, it's, you know, clients could consider, you know, coming off plan. Um, it's a very, very secure mechanism. Uh, developers have to put up completion guarantees. Um, construction companies have to put up guarantees. Um, and what's quite nice is the consumer can be more involved in the process. So if you are going to buy off plan, a slightly different process. Um, you come to the island or deal over Zoom, um, you identify a property that works for you and you enter into a preliminary contract. Um, what that essentially means is um, you're booking a unit, you pay a 10% deposit, um, and then we would then have to pre-sale a certain number of units. So if we take Montrose phase four, um, there are about 50 units in the development. Um, we would need to probably pre-sell about 25, 20 to 25 of those units before the developers would start construction. So a 10% deposit paid, preliminary contract is entered into. And then when we get through the sales, which should take us, let's say, nine months on phase four, we then hit our mark and we would then go and ask the consumer to top up and pay another 15%. And so at that point that the client then does the title deed and can apply for residency. Um, yeah. So even if there are clients out there that would prefer to have a property earlier because they want to occupy, we very often say to people, look, buy off plan. Yes, it might take two and a half years to be complete, but you've got the residence, you can come and rent an interim. So um, people do have the option complete versus off plan because you can access the country almost straight away once you've um, taken title. So on, in, in the case of Montrose, about nine months time, you can apply for your residency. And then essentially the consumer pays throughout the process as it builds. Um, the development team will start construction. Um, it will be about a two year process. And at different milestones of the construction, the development company will request funds from the consumer. Um, and um, that will then sort of run through to completion. And we will then, uh, during that process, allow people to get a little bit involved in the finishes, which is quite nice um, so they can customized to a degree on what the unit will look like when they eventually occupy. Um, once we complete, there'd be a handover period. So clients would come out, view the property um, um, and basically take handover to the property. Yeah, so it's a whole phase process that you're going through there. So Jonathan, I mean, you've lived in, in Mauritius for 15 years. I mean, how do you think it compares with South African, certainly from a cost of living perspective? Um, look, I'm working here, so I think my cost of living is very similar to what my cost of living would be in South Africa. Um, we have a, a really good tax structure here, so income tax is at 15%. Um, so I would say from a, from a pure cost of living, certain items would be around 10% more than South Africa, sort of foodstuffs, um, cars. Um, those sort of things might be a bit more expensive than you would find in South Africa. But 
after South Africa, Mauritius is a very cost-effective place to live. I mean, you then have to look at, compare against Australia or the UK or America. I think Mauritius is a lot more affordable for South Africans um, because I think the RAND goes much further in South Africa. Um, and, it's a, and it's a very similar lifestyle to South Africa. So people could budget probably a similar to slightly higher cost than you might find in South Africa. Um, but schooling's reasonable, um, restaurants are reasonable, um, entertainment prices are reasonable. Property is probably more in line with Cape Town when you look at cost of living. So if you look at what it might cost to buy a property in Cape Town, I think Mauritius and Cape Town are very comparable um, in price. So even at that point, I don't think we're that much more expensive than, than Cape Town or even certain pockets of um, KwaZulu-Natal. Um, so it's really the tax that makes it very attractive. So part of when we looked at the profile of consumer, a lot of retirees would relocate to Mauritius for financial reasons and then find themselves in a very different cost um, tax structure to where they might find themselves in other parts of the world. So I think that would bring um, Mauritius and South Africa almost into parity, being very, very similar, um, if not probably a lower cost when you look at your disposable income after you've paid tax. Yeah, great. Um, so Jonathan, just the, if you look at the infrastructure in Gramba, it seems to be continuing to grow. Now, maybe just tell the audience out there, what is a smart city? Because, uh, and I know these, these smart city developments, and I think maybe explain how important is that to the Montreuxie smart city in, in this regard and how they, they, they operate together. Okay, so I, I think smart city is, is it's the sort of, third phase of um, what the government's introduced into the property market. So when the property market started in Mauritius in 2005 with Pam Golding launching the first development, it was an integrated resort scheme. Um, the government at the time was looking to take large parcels of land and develop them for leisure purposes. Um, and those developments were very, very well suited towards leisure but they might not have been that well suited towards um, full-time living. So the government was looking to get development done in maybe sort of more remote parts of the island um, to encourage you know, property development or investment on the island. And that development framework existed through till about 2009. And when the uh, recession of 2009 hit, the uh, Mauritian authorities introduced a new property mechanism, which was referred to as the RES, um, the real estate scheme. Um, and that's the first time that um, Grand Bay became a place that you could buy. So up until 2009, as a foreigner, you couldn't get access to buying property in Grand Bay. Um, so it actually, if you look at the if you look at the property development around Grand Bay and the other area was Tamarin, which are the two urban sort of coastal resorts on the island. Um, Grand Bay grew massively through the RES development. So those were smaller developments, typically on one acre, two acres, three acres, maybe up to about 10 acres. Um, and that was a really, really, really strong growth period um, through till about um, 2014, 15. And then the government basically came up with the smart city concept. So they looked to um, increase the services that development companies, smart city development companies can offer consumers. So this was really about trying to develop more of a town um, environment. So give the consumer far more shops, give them more medical, give them more sports and leisure um, and activities um, in an effort to attract people to come and live on the island. So Grand Bay already was developing very quickly under the real estate scheme, the smaller developments. And then when, when Montreuxie converted to a smart city, um, the um, authorities were looking for Montreuxie to start developing out um, far more infrastructure within their estate in order to attract people that want a more permanent um, lifestyle and investors who may find that their investment um, adds more value by having all the infrastructure in place. So this particular smart city, as Garrett mentioned, just has an incredible situation because it's a, it's a town within a town. So they can develop a town on the periphery of a town. So for me, I think Montreuxie is a really important phase of developing Grand Bay, um, creating a new 
environment for you know current and future people to occupy um, Mauritius because a lot of consumers coming into the environment want a community you know they want to come into an environment where you know they've got golf clubs they've got you know card clubs they've got book clubs um, they've got a big network of people that they can um, can live in a community with um, they want to have what they would do in a city they want to go ride their bikes walk their dogs um, they want schools quite close by um, they want shops and offices quite close by so that's really where smart cities fit into the next phase of development in Mauritius because it will create an environment that uh, is a lot more adaptive for people who want to come out and live in the island. Excellent. Can you maybe give us a rundown of you know what is actually happening sales wise and, and, and particularly with phase four that Garrett actually alluded to earlier? We start at the Montrosie Golf Clubhouse which is located on the center of the thousand acre site. From there, we'll move into the completed residential areas of phase one and two, which were completed around three years ago. Um, this phase comprises apartments and villas with the apartments located around large pools, while the villas are either built onto the golf course or over, overlooking some developed wetlands within the residential phase. The architecture is modern, um, built into open plan living. Um, and I look, and this is an ideal site that is really close to the Montrose beach. From there, we'll move across to the 55 acre park area, which has been developed for the residences of the Montrose estate. And for those residences wanting to walk, run, or cycle, this is a very popular park environment for clients to visit. From there, moving on from the park area, we'll move to the new phase of residential, which is currently on offer for sale. Um, phase three and phase four of the residential areas are similar in design to the current phases of the completed residential. It comprises of both villas and apartments that will also be designed into a tropical setting with the apartments overlooking large pools while the villas are either in a parkland setting or certain villas facing onto a golf course. From there, we'll move on to the um, shopping mall area and the Grand Bay area just to highlight how close the state is to Mont is to how close the estate is to Grand Bay, allowing clients an amazing access to the most developed coastal town in Mauritius. Um, so ideally located um, really close to the Lacoisette and Montrose shopping malls, um, a couple of minutes from the Grand Bay Yacht Club, and then a whole host of restaurants, gyms shopping centers, um, and many other recreational facilities that are available in the Grand Bay area. This virtual tour, also available on the visitmontroisie.com website, this virtual tour allows future residents to get access to what the apartments that they might purchase in the future will look like. Set amongst very large pools and a park type setup, there is ample space between the buildings to create sufficient privacy for homeowners. The developers have also chosen to create much larger apartments than are typically found on the island, where potential buyers can choose from two bedrooms that start at 135 square meters and go up to 173 square meters, 
while the three bedroom units are at 225 square meters. So much larger than the average that would be found on the island. They've built a very high specification in an open plan type environment with very large outdoor terraces to complement the tropical lifestyle. Utilizing very modern finishes and wood and stone cladding, these apartments, due to their, due to their size and size, will feel more like a home than a typical apartment would feel like. However, will still provide an ideal lockup and go lifestyle for clients that would be spending three to six months a year on the island. We will then move through to the penthouses. The penthouses in phase three are sold out with a further penthouse in phase four sold out. These penthouses have some views over Grand Bay with very large outdoor living spaces that one would expect to find in a penthouse type environment. Ideally set up for those that like outdoor living. You have a large swimming pool, a lovely undercover terrace with certain outdoor terrace spaces also open to the sun. Then moving through to the units, we have an open plan lifestyle, which really opens up completely, which allows for lovely airflow and an integration into the outdoor settings. We here have very modern finishes with lots of wood cladding, which allow owners to open these units right up to enjoy the elements. Also built to a very modern finish. Homeowners here can get the benefit of having sea views from this large golf estate. Great stuff. So that's uh, given us a nice uh, round trip there. Thank you for that, Jonathan. Uh, Garrett and Richard, you're far too quiet. We're going to have to get you involved here again. Yeah, Garrett, I mean, you've seen now travel to Mauritius has been lifted. I mean, there's more flights now between South Africa and Mauritius. And maybe the, this opens up the opportunity. So I think the most important question, everybody, is can we come and visit the Montrose development? And how can the audience go about maybe coming to see you in your, in your own backyard? <laughs> yes, definitely. I mean, um, we're based on the estate. Um, so Pam Golding is also based in the north, uh, right next to our estate. And uh, whenever you... Uh, would someone would like to come and see the estate, you know, to to visit Grand Bay, to have a guided tour of, of our lifestyle and our leisure offerings, um, just needs to drop us a line or an email and, and we'll set it all up. Fantastic. Excellent. Okay, Richard, I want to bring you in here because there's, and I want to deal with this quite a pile of questions that have come in. I'm going to you know, put it through to all of you. But Richard, this particular one is for you. Um, and it's related to property finance. And, uh, and it's quite a big question and sometimes quite loaded. And because I, I noticed there's quite a few that we've got uh, in the Q&A box. Uh, can you finance property in Mauritius? And does it still qualify for residency? Maybe you can talk about, you know, the financing opportunities, mortgage durations, et cetera, maybe interest rates and that kind of stuff. Do you want to elaborate on that? Yeah, so look, finance is available on the island. Um, one of the nice things for South Africans is APSA came to the island around um, four years ago. Um, used to be Barclays on the island. Um, uh, they, they've, you know, with the whole APSA Barclays split up, APSA's retained uh, Mauritius. Um, they're quite aggressive when it comes to giving home loans. Um, interest rates at around 3.25%. Um, mm -hmm. So people have an option on terms, 10, 15, or 20 years on the terms. Um, Generally, the banks would mortgage between 60 and 70% of the capital value. Um, a lot of it does depend on age, though. So if you're in your 60s, it's probably 10 years. In your 50s, it'll probably be 15 or 20 years on a mortgage. Um, the um, interest rate of 3.25%, it would roughly equate on a 15-year mortgage to around 55,000 rupees, um, which would be around 18,000 rand per 10 million rupees. Um, so that's a rough um, calculation for clients who want to you know, potentially look at financing a property. Um, 
you know, the, the good thing as well is that the interest rates sit at around 3.25%, but the returns on property sit around 4% on the island. So, you know, well-geared investment um, with the rental in a popular area um, should cover most investors' um, um, remaining bond, um, which is a positive. Um, and we are noticing a lot more people bond. For the first sort of 12 or 13 years that I was here, most clients were cash buyers, but um, we're starting to see more and more consumers consider funding, particularly clients under 50 who don't want to tie up you know, all their capital, um, still got businesses and you know, kids to pay for and whatever. And uh, so they would typically look at um, mortgaging. Um, and then also those clients might look at going off plan. So people with a slightly longer term, more investment driven mindset would often look at a phase like phase four or a development that's just sort of going to market because it allows them to plan the um, the payments um, far easier. I just, I just want to add one thing to that. Um, so ultimately, I mean, the Mauritian program is the only program where you can gear a residency purchase. So if you look at some of the other programs, they all require a cash investment. So, you know, we're also seeing some of our clients that want to purchase for themselves and for their kids, as an example, they would rather choose them to gear, to buy two properties and gear them uh, then, then you know, pay everything outright cash, and it just makes sense based on the interest rates and the yields you, you're getting from the rental perspective. A uh, question is a general one: Can you buy two ground plus two units, totaling three hundred and seventy-five US dollars, and get residence? So essentially, can you buy two units totaling three seventy-five USD and get residence? Yeah, I mean, unfortunately not. Um, it has to be one property for $375,000. But what Rich did mention up front, for, yes, ground plus two will give you residence. It needs to be one purchase of $375,000. However, Rich did mention early on that um, let's say um, my father wants to buy property. It's so my father wants to buy property for residence, and I also want residence, but I'm 50. What a lot of guys are doing is they're flipping it. They're putting in the son's name um, and the parents will then come with the son on the residency. So it's a different okay. way of doing it. Uh, it's a little bit more creative. Um, it was a very, very welcome sort of a, you know, introduction when it did come out on the last budget that, that we could now bring parents through the residency scheme. So if the clients want to call us with an idea of what, they, what they're trying to achieve as far as, you know, the, the the mom and dad and the son, even if the son is, you know, late 40s, 50s, there are ways of, you know, structuring the purchase so that both can get residency. Excellent. I think in, in, related to that question, I think it's a very good question. It said, must the investment be in residential property or can the investment be in business property or investing funds in an investment portfolio? In Mauritius, because I think it's also there's a if you set up a company, etc. So it's quite a broad-based one. Um, so basically, if they want permanent residence for life, it's attached to the the property. Um, if you come on an investor permit to where you invest into a company and so forth, you need to, there are certain conditions and and revenue and so forth that needs to be made to keep that residency. Um, they. They do give, I think, 10-year um, permanent residence if you come in on a, an investor permit. So it's a different way of getting residency, but it's only for a limited term. When, when you buy into um, the property sector within the smart city, you get it for as long as you own that property. So it's, it's a more secure long-term um, permanent residency. Excellent. Great. And another question. Uh, if I get a piece of land, how easy is it to get a local partner to develop it with us for the market? Yeah, look, I mean, we get a lot of guys who come into this process and, um, you know, have got the idea of developing because I think South Africa, you know, huge part, parts of South Africa have been developed over the last 30 or 40 years. So a lot of guys have tried their hand in South Africa at developing and have managed to develop small apartment blocks and maybe small cluster developments and even some, resi uh, some residential you know, developments or retail or commercial or what have you. So there's obviously a lot of experience in the South African um, uh, property market. Um, I would say it's fairly difficult to do. Um, the critical thing um, in Mauritius um, is the permits. Um, 
and they are very, very um, um, loath to give permits to people that don't have track records, that don't have an infrastructure on the island. Um, they haven't purchased the land outright, so they don't own the, the land. Um, so it's actually quite difficult to do what you might do in South Africa, which is find a guy with land, you put up the expertise, and together you develop out the property. Um, you know, I, I, my, own, my own view would be, you know, rather when you're offshore, just find the right development by one property. Um, I personally, unless I was here full time, you know, with the infrastructure, with a lot of local experience, um, I would stay out of development personally um, and rather yeah. let, let us find your stuff if you're interested and, you know, and, and be close to your own investments developed in your own in your own country absolutely it's kind of a new kind of risk you're bringing in yeah, so yeah. another question yeah and i think there's some really good questions coming through here and i think you mentioned it uh, jonathan that you know a lot of south african experience investors yeah uh, can the property investment be in your own name for self and or your spouse to get residency or uh, can investment be through a mauritian based trust or company or entity all yeah. options are all those options are available. So um, you can buy it into a Mauritian trust. That's fairly standard here. So a lot of guys who are large investors have have tr trusts. Um, you can also put it into a local company. So if it didn't form part of a very large sort of wealth creation environment, I would say local companies probably a more cost effective way to do it. Or you can put it into your husband, the husband and wife's name. Um, so all options are open, and there's actually. Another structure here called the society, which almost operates like a trust like we'd have in South Africa, but far more cost effective to run, but also manages the estate planning part of, um, of the purchase. Um, so uh, we work with a number of groups, plus we obviously handle a number of transactions per year that require people to set up structures. So happy to you know, answer anyone's emails. Excellent. Richard, do you want to add to that as well? Yeah, so the, the, the actual holding structure of the property is, is critical uh, in terms of the estate planning and the tax planning. So, you know, it's invariably a question we get almost from every client that says, you know, how should I hold the property? Now, mm -hmm. that, that whole structure and, and offshore um, company structure and trust structure is a very specialized field and, and critical that, that the clients engage with, you know, somebody we can recommend them to that will take, you know, assess their individual situation and provide a solution that meets, you know, their requirements. Okay, excellent. So this uh, question also, once permanent residency has been granted through property, may both husband and wife, spouse, work in their own businesses in Mauritius? So yes, the, answer, the short answer is yes. That was also one of the adjustments that came out of um, the last budget. Um, so, um, that allows you to open a business. Um, one of the advantages of having permanent residence is also you don't need a local shareholder. So if you're running an offshore business or an onshore business, um, you can establish a company. Uh, you don't need occupation permits. You don't need further approvals. Um, so both husband and wife in their own capacities, either together or separately, can set up structures to, uh, to work. Okay, excellent. I'm going to bring in you, Garrett, because... Uh... And it's obviously related to the, the Montrezee uh, development. And uh, can you, for the investors into to Montrezee, what are the current rental yields? And I know it's also in your domain, uh, Jonathan, and also Richard, vacancy rates, et cetera, um, long-term leases or more holiday short stay base, et cetera. Do you want to maybe just share what your so policies you are? For our current uh, 211 uh, residences that we've completed since 2018. Okay, so let me cover that quickly. So ultimately, um, there's a full rental management program wrapped around Montrezee. So cu currently covering phase one and two. So out of the 211 units, we have about 80 units under rental management. And some of the clients choose to have a, put a long-term tenant in place, uh, which gives them a stable revenue, but obviously they can't use it. And then the other clients opt for a midterm or some short-term rentals just to garner some revenue. Now, we're seeing yields at about anywhere from 4% to 5% plus minus gross yields, uh, net probably about 3.8% to 4.8%. Uh, you know, the more expensive the property, often you see a slightly lower yield. 
But what's interesting at Montreal is that you're currently short on stock. So the, the, the guys that have put their, their properties into the long-term program, uh, we've currently run out of stock. And we're actually going to the homeowners saying, you know, guys, please can you uh, think about renting out your unit? Which, is, which, which just sort of points to the fact that um, people moving to Mauritius are, are finding Montreal as a, a, a great place to live and they're enjoying their estate. So, we, so, so that's, you know, we're looking forward to phase three coming on stream so we can get more stock in the program. Excellent. Okay, and this one is actually from Edgar. He's a Kenyan, but he says he has an interest in Mauritian real estate. And he says, does the resident requirements you are taking, you're talking about, of course, apply to all foreigners or just South Africans? Additionally, are there other developments in your portfolio? And that would obviously be to the Pan Golding guys. You know, Garrett doesn't like to hear that because, uh, you know, he's Manchoisie. But let's say the quieter parts of the island, the east or the southeast, um, which Garrett ill advises you go. So, <laughs> so maybe, maybe just from the, the resident requirements, if you're a Kenyan, any thoughts? I don't know whether you've got any abuse on that, Johnny. I can, that, I can, Johnny. Answer, I can, yeah. I can answer that. Um, yeah, so Kenya is the same as any other foreign client coming into the market. Um, the requirements are identical, same forms, um, same documents that we need. Um, so, yeah, that process would be exactly the same. Um, with regards to other developments, yes, I mean, we have built our business, um, Pam Golding's business on the island for around 20 years, off the back of suggesting people buy into close to the towns. Um, when I say close, at least sort of, sort of 10 to 15 kilometers from the infrastructure. Um, because the island looks really small on the map, um, but the roads are smaller. So the road networks are very, very well created from the airport up into the towns. Um, they're very well you know, developed around the towns. But as you start to sort of get out um, from the towns, the road network is not as efficient. Um, and if you're living here for longer periods of time, really, I think you want to be at a bakery in one minute, you know, at a butchery in three minutes, at a gym in four minutes, at the school in five minutes, um, just to make it convenient. Um, and maybe travel from the towns to maybe some more of the sort of more remote areas because there are beautiful beaches, um, there are beautiful mountains. Um, there's a lot of recreation things, hiking, biking, you know, nature reserves, all that kind of stuff. But my advice has always been, you know, try and be close to the town where you live, and then try and explore from there rather than doing it the other way around, having to kind of be quite remote and then trying to come into the towns for you know sort of day to day, day to day stuff. That would be my advice, but we can, we can, whoever has asked the question, if they drop us an email, we'll send them a property portfolio on everything that we okay. have, because Excellent. maybe there's a product that's more diverse. Maybe it's not exactly what Montrose is, but maybe it's a slightly different offering that might suit them. Yeah. To our audience, I just want to say thank you for firing all those questions. I mean, uh, we haven't managed to get through everything we have. I'm conscious of time. We have approached the end of our webinar. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around the table, you know, starting with you, Garrett, uh, then Richard, and then uh, lastly, Jonathan, just giving us your, your parting shots. Uh, what we will do to the audience, we'll ensure all those questions and details with your permission, which you've opted into this webinar, will be sent through. So starting with uh, you, Garrett, your final parting shots, maybe give us your minute to take away for everybody that can get them excited about investing in Mauritius and particularly Montrose. Yeah, well, um, just a last, uh, a last uh, quick say about Montrose. Um, so just again, it's, it's been built around family living, um, lifestyle offerings um, and golf estate living. Um, with having all the, the, the benefits of uh, Grand Bay right next door, um, the beach across the road, uh, and, and all the nightlife and restaurants and hotels, you know, just around the corner within five minutes drive. So you do get the whole estate living, which is quiet. Um, it's a community living as well. Um, so you get all those benefits. It's not noisy. Um, you know, it's a very big estate, you know, 420 odd um, hectare estate. So, you know, once you're living in the estate, it's not like you're living next door to, uh, let me say, you don't feel Grand Bay next door. Uh, you don't feel it at all. Um, and then, but, but you get all the benefits. If you want to pop into the butchery, you know, we're building, we're building a set of the art clinic, a CK clinic uh, within the smart city. We're going to be doing a school next year. So eventually, um, just to, to add on what John was saying about the smart city. So a smart city is more 
a live work play environment. So, you know, we've got the live component, the play component being the golf, and the work component, a component is still needs to, to be built out, you know, um, retail, office, um, our schools, um, the hospital. So, so eventually you wouldn't need to, to leave the smart city, you know, once that's, that's all like developed in the next five to 10 years, um, it's, it's a city within a city, basically a town within a town, like, like what John said. So wonderful. All in paradise. Thank you, Garrett. It's All a wonderful way to yeah. <laughs> wonderful way to finish. Richard, your parting shots, your final words before we get to Jonathan to finish off. Um, yeah, I think like all property markets, it's location, location, location. So um, important to to always consider that you know, aspect of buying property, and particularly when you're in a foreign uh, foreign market. Um, the other thing is um, to not you know, try and bypass any of the process. You know, the, the buying process for clients is very well regulated and it's there for a reason. And all those, um, all the property transactions run in a particular way that's through the notary, through the attorney, then gets paid to the developers. And it's a, it's a very regulated process. And um, every now and then we get asked, listen, yeah, can't we do a deal directly with the developer? And, and um, I've heard of two instances where, where things don't go so well. So, you know, just word of advice to clients, just you know, stick to the, the formal legal process it's there to, to protect the investor and um, it just helps you through, you know, through the investment. Excellent. Thank you, Richard. And thank you for your contribution. And to Garrett and Jonathan, your final and parting shots, please. Yeah, um, what I would say, Neil, um, you know, firstly, thank you for everyone joining, um, would be try and do as much homework about the different projects before you get to the island. Um, I still think there's value in, in the Zoom type environment, but on a one-on-one. -on -one, to try and shortlist before a client gets here. Um, you get here and it seems like there's so much going on, but I think it's critical before you get here to know who are the solid developers, what are the solid locations, um, understanding why certain things cost certain things, other things cost um, you know, something different. Um, a lot of the market is bought off plan. Um, and for that reason, we're always encouraging um, consumers to Go with people we know, in locations that we know, um, with people who've done things in the past. Um, because it's like all property markets, you come out and you think, well, wow, this is really, really too good to be true. But invariably, you know, there's a reason why different products are priced at, uh, at different things. Um, so my parting thoughts really would be, as Rich said, follow the process, um, work with solid people, um, we're here to help you before you arrive. If you'd like to do a Zoom call, we can take you through the different areas to buy, what's available, why things are priced like they are, who the people are. Um, and then when you arrive, just give us you know, a few days of notice. Um, we can schedule to show you around. And then we would really focus on you know, why we feel um, consumers, particularly off plan, it's different if it's complete, but particularly off plan um, should go with the safest possible option because once you've bought and you've left you can't be here every weekend to watch progress um you, need, you know you might be here every six months to a year and uh you know there you really want to make sure that you've um, you've bought from really solid strong you know reputable developers that can offer value excellent jonathan tag of pam golding properties richard the hello of pam golding properties and Garrett Fitzgerald of Montrosie Development in Mauritius. Thank you very much, gentlemen. I think it was a great chat, a very insightful, got a lot of questions that uh, unfortunately brings us to the conclusion of our webinar, but I'd like to thank you all. And uh, also I'd like to end off with an inspirational quote from Mark Twain, where he said, you gather the idea that Mauritius was made first, then heaven and that heaven was copied after Mauritius. <laughs> so you need to get out there. And uh, as you heard, Garrett, he welcomes you there. And uh, so I encourage you all to engage with Richard, uh, Jonathan and Garrett. So, so please do that. To our audience, thank you for joining us and your participation today. We hope you enjoyed it, got value from this webinar. For future events, don't miss our next big conference, which is next Thursday. It's a three-hour conference. Uh, Thursday, the 11th of November, from 10 o'clock to 1 o'clock. Um, it's a highly popular annual of the Real Estate Investor Roda Annual Property Conference. Uh, this year, it's sponsored by a local 
uh, crossways farm village. So speakers include top economists, property specialists, including the future prospects of South African economy, impact of expropriation without compensation, how to access property title for more people in South Africa, sustainable developments and investing with a residential and commercial property markets are headed into 22 and beyond. Definitely one not to be missed. So certainly, uh, as we heard from our panel, you know, diversify your portfolio. This particular event is a paid one. It is uh, only 399 rand per ticket. There is a link on below. Then thereafter, the week after, we got a networking event in our innovative 3D spatial web space. And, uh, and I think it's sometime, uh, Richard, Jonathan, and Garrett, we need to get you a wonderful 3D space where we're actually doing our networking and you should be showcasing your property there. And in fact, maybe our next webinar next year, we can do in that space. It really is innovative, exciting, and you get the feel of you know, being in the area where you want to invest, uh, in particular Mauritius in this case. So then on Thursday, the 25th of November, there's also a link, it's a free webinar, and that's the property rental market update brought to you by PayProp. You just click on the link below, and that's on Thursday, the 25th, 12 to 1. So once again, to everybody, thank you all for joining us. Stay safe and successful in investing. Um, this is Neil Peterson of Real Estate Investors signing out. Thank you to Montrazi and to Pan Golding Properties. Wonderful having you.